89.9 WKCR is an FM radio station based in New York. One odd night in the year of 1995, the radio station went offline for approximately three minutes. During this time, it was said to have been hijacked by a bone-chilling female voice. Brace yourself. After the first two bars of music end, it's guaranteed to bring shivers down your spine. Following the initial override and heaving breathing, the mysterious voice begins to read out the name and time of death of various people who lived in New York. The chant-like rhythm combined with the faint ring of chimes makes this second segment emulate a situation that is nothing less than demonic. The voice was never traced, nor was any major connection made between the names being read. This leaves the paranormal events as an outright shocking mystery. About seven years ago, on March 9, 2008, a 10-second clip of an eerie, unidentifiable voice was discovered in the midst of a historian's research, which dated all the way back to 1860. This recording was created using a phonograph, which was the bleeding edge of sound-based technology at the time. Compared to the audio we are used to today, this clip sounds nothing less than a demonic chant you would hear in your worst nightmare. In the midst of the faint and fuzzy audio, the unknown voice is barely singing the lyrics of a famous folk song, Au Claire de la Lune. The mystery and the historical age of this clip make it downright frightening. The original Night Stalker is a name that was given to a brutally evil man who ferociously raped 50 women and killed 10 victims over a 10-year time span. Before each of these gruesome acts, the Night Stalker would often leave muffled, horrifying messages on a victim's answering machine. Here is one of the recordings that police believe to have linked to the original Night Stalker. The Night Stalker was never convicted and is still out there today. It's frightening to consider the possibility that your answering machine could contain a similar message any day now. When considering the possibility of aliens and parallel dimensions, it becomes very easy to dismiss it all as mere fiction. The following clip is between a public radio broadcast and an unknown caller based in military facility Area 51 proves to be very different. The psychotic and emotional atmosphere of panic and sincerity of terror in the caller's voice is either incredible acting or the introduction to a harsh reality the human race always wishes to dismiss so quickly. The discovery of aliens. Hello, Art? Yes. Hi. Um, I... I, I... I don't have a whole lot of uh, time. Um, well, look, let's begin yeah. by finding out whether you're using this line properly or not. Uh, Area 51. Yeah, um, that's right. Were you an employee or are you now? Uh, I, a former employee. Former um, employee. I, I, I was let go on a medical discharge about a week ago. Uh, they're they're going to... Um, they'll triangulate on this position really, really soon. So um, you can't spend a lot of time on the phone, so give us something quick. Okay, um, okay, what, what we're thinking of as, as aliens are, they're, uh, they're, they're extra-dimensional beings that an earlier precursor of the, um, space program made contact with. Uh, they, they are not what they claim to be. I, I started getting... In some way, something knocked us off the air, and we're on a backup system now. It's the uh, government, or...? I don't know. 
The caller claims that the aliens are actually extra-dimensional beings, and they are not what they claim to be, which means that they are able to access a dimension we are unable to decipher. The fact that science is still catching up to these complex areas of study leaves us to ask ourselves, are we constantly surrounded by invisible, extraterrestrial entities that we fear so greatly? Vladimir Komarov was a Russian astronaut who made a journey into space that was cut short due to the botched construction and inspection of the spaceship prior to launch. He spent 17 orbits in a freezing cold, permanently rotating capsule, which lacked power and stabilization. This clip is Komarov's final transmission to one of the leaders of the expedition, named Alexei Kosygin, during his lethal fall toward Earth, cursing at the people who put him inside a flawed spaceship. Listening to the final words of Komarov, combined with the beeps of nothingness, is horrifying in its own way by observing such a tragic death. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration teams have various posts stationed in the deep sea to assist with research and anticipate natural disasters such as tsunamis. On rare occasions, the recordings found by these posts will pick up mysterious sounds that are archived and labeled unidentified. One of the strangest unidentified sounds contained in these archives has been given the name Julia. This humane, eerie, woman-like voice, combined with the fact that less than 5% of the ocean has been explored, leads us to the terrifying reality that entities with behavior completely unknown to humans may be lurking in the uncharted depths of the ocean. During the Vietnam War, the Vietnamese belief was that the dead must be buried in their homeland, or their soul will wander aimlessly in pain and suffering. Vietnamese feel that if a person is improperly buried, then their soul wanders constantly. The U.S. used this against them by recording ghostly sounds and voices, which they hoped would impersonate dead, wandering Vietnamese soldiers. The sense of torture and emotion instilled in the ghost's voice, combined with the story, makes this recording genuinely sinister. We must think about the torture and torment the Vietnamese must have been going through by having this ghostly, religiously offensive clip constantly play through the cold, dark tunnels throughout the war. Very creepy indeed. The unexplored secrets of our galaxy will always be mysterious to us as humans. The Cassini spacecraft is a ship that was sent to Saturn in 2004. Since then, it has been recording various data about the planet, completely new to us. During this expedition, the spacecraft has been detecting intense radio emissions from the planet. These signals have been compressed to become audible to the human ear, and this is the result. Now that sounds much like an audio track from a sci-fi horror movie prior to a murder. It's shocking to think about how little we know about space and what's actually going on out there. 
One of the most heart-wrenching stories is of the Jonestown Massacre. The People's Temple was a cult led by Jim Jones, which held approximately a thousand people. Jones isolated his followers at a place informally named Jonestown and promised them a utopian society where everything would be equal. In the end, Jones' narcissistic and extremist religious beliefs led him to killing over 900 people, including children, with cyanide-infused Kool-Aid. The following is the clip of Jones' last words while he brutally committed mass genocide among his followers. Death is... I tell you, I don't care how many screams you hear, I don't care how many anguished cries, death is a million times preferable to ten more days of this life. If you knew what was ahead of you, if you knew what was ahead of you, you'd be glad to be stepping over tonight. Jim chose to kill all the children first. The cries from the children slowly dying from the inside out is frightening and sickening enough, but it gets worse following Jim's last words. In suicide, we commit an act of revolutionary suicide protesting the conditions of an inhumane world. After Jim speaks his final words and the poison was finally setting in, you can clearly hear a very alarming demonic growl, followed by faint demonic chants. Once everyone was confirmed dead, Jim Jones would take his own life by shooting himself in the head. It's not a surprise that an act as disgusting as this can awaken the presence of evil supernatural beings. The WOW signal was a radio signal detected by astronomer Jerry Amon while he was taking part in an extraterrestrial investigation using a radio telescope. During the investigation, a signal was discovered coming from deep space in the constellation of Sagittarius. Here is a snippet of the recording. So far, no astronomer has ever been able to pick up a signal remotely close to this one. The scariest part is the fact that the signal was transmitted from one of the emptiest places imaginable in space. So if a signal is emitted from a location that contains no actual structures, it would be from some floating object, leading people to believe it could have been some sort of spaceship. This recording proves to be the best evidence yet for extraterrestrial existence.